Hello everybody out there in the bookverse, it's Stephanie and today I am back with a very long overdue video. I haven't done a book haul in a really long time and they've kind of been stacking up. Now I will say that I have kind of tried to limit my book buying a little bit more than I have in the past just because I am in school so I'm paying for that so I'm trying to be a little more selective on the books that I buy. That being said, there are a lot here because I, I'll look back and I will let you know when the last book haul I did was, but it's been months. It's been a very, very long time since then. A lot of these books are special editions because I get them on a monthly basis from some subscriptions and also some I've bought as like one-off things from the book boxes as well that weren't like the subscription ones. Uh, some of them are birthday books, not too many this year. I did show some restraint from uh, um, on my birthday this year, so it wasn't nearly as many as it has been in the past. And then other ones are just from, I, I enjoy walking to the bookstore on the weekend. It's kind of a good way for me to get out of the house, so some of them are from those walks as well. Um, but yeah, there's a lot because it's been a long time. So I'm not super upset about the number because it has been months, but I really should not be talking this much, much at the beginning because there are a ton of books here and I need to get through them. So let's go ahead and we'll start with the books that I got for my birthday. My birthday was last month and I absolutely love my birthday, but this year was just not as exciting as it usually is because I was in the middle of like my clinicals for school. Uh, but there are still some good books here that I'm really excited about. This first one was the only one that I got from one of my friends and it was from Sophia who I absolutely love. Sophia is such a good friend. She's very loyal. Like I have been a terrible bookish online world friend lately because school has just taken over my life and I feel like she's just kind of always there and not really judging whether like I'm super involved or not and she's just like yeah we're friends it's great and I absolutely love her for that. And she sent me The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. This is the first book in what's it, the Dreamland Billionaire series. And I've just seen this all over TikTok. People are obsessed with it, people love it, and I'm I'm actually really excited to try this one out. I think this could be a series that I really enjoy. I I just I don't know what to expect from it. I have heard that the first book is not as good, but you need to read the first book to get to the second book. I could be wrong on this, but I am actually really excited to read this and I think it kind of feels like a holiday break type read and I don't know why, but I'm running with it because I now have it. So yes, very excited about this one. This next one I'm a little embarrassed about and you'll know why later, but that is Masters of Death by Olive Blake. This one I walked to the bookstore and then I had my Patreons vote on which of the four books I presented to them as options I should get and they chose Masters of Death. I am really, really excited about this book. I've loved the, both things that I've read from Olive Blake so far and so I'm really looking forward to jumping into more of her work. I really like the cover. I don't know. It just kind of is giving kind of maybe like dark creepy medicine type vibes which I don't know why but that just sounds like something I would absolutely enjoy. I really don't know what this is about at all but I am very excited to get to it. This next one is one that I went to the bookstore and just kind of picked out several books to get on my birthday weekend. That's The Judas Blossom by Stephen Arian. I've heard absolutely no one talk about this book and I'm not exactly sure what to expect from it. Honestly, I picked it out mostly because I love the colors on this cover. I think it's beautiful, but I believe this is a retelling of the Mongol Empire trying to take over Persia and I believe this follows the the grandson of Genghis Khan, who is trying to fulfill what his grandfather was trying to do. I think it sounds really interesting. I'm intrigued by it. I don't necessarily know what to expect because again, I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but it sounds really good. And it's not that long. It's just over 400 pages, which for an adult high fantasy, I feel like is quite reasonable. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I just, I don't know when the mood is gonna strike me to read it. This next one was my husband's top choice of books for me to get, and that is The Pomegranate Gate by Ariel Kaplan. And this book is an adult high fantasy that is set in a world where the queen is telling all the Jews that they need to convert to, it really, it really just says convert or face banishment. I think that our main character has some sort of magical powers, and I believe it's kind of based on um, medieval Spain. 
I, I could be wrong on that, but that's what I think uh, based on what my husband was telling me because he knows history a lot better than I do and he really enjoys it a lot. So yeah, I'm intrigued by this one. I also, again, this was another cover pick because I think it's absolutely stunning. This next one, I saw all over TikTok. I feel like I was not, I didn't recognize that this was a fantasy romance until I read the back of it. And that is Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. Mayer? I could be saying that wrong. Uh, but this is published by the same company that did Fourth Wing. So I didn't absolutely love Fourth Wing. I'm kind of unsure how I'll feel about this, but I think it sounds intriguing. Uh, in this story, this girl gets a job offer from a villain, takes it, and then starts to develop a crush on him, which I think sounds cute. I am hoping for more of a lighthearted fantasy read in this, like maybe some like whimsical, but fun cozy vibes to it that's what i'm that's what i'm hoping for in this one and honestly i feel like i would really enjoy reading this one during the holiday season as well just because like the cozy fantasy vibes holiday season i just love cozy books so i think this one might be one that i'll read sooner rather than later this next one i have been wanting for a really long time i just feel like this sounds like something i would absolutely love but i was wanting to maybe get like a special edition of it or to get like well it's Ink Blood Sister Scribe, and I don't want this on here. I hate these non removable stickers. They just, they bug me a lot on books, but I figured I could read it, and if I actually did love it, then maybe I could take the time and money and effort to buy a special edition of it. So I went ahead and got it. I think this was like the actual purchase on my birthday when we went to the bookstore. And it's described as in this spellbinding debut novel, two estranged half sisters tasked with guarding their family's library of magical books must work together to unravel a deadly secret at the heart of their collection, a tale of familial loyalty and betrayal and the pursuit of magic and power. So really, I'm kind of hoping for this to be a book that is kind of about books, about the love of books, preserving knowledge and magic and those types of things. I don't always love the like familial dynamics in books, honestly, but I don't dislike them. So yeah, I'm just, I'm hoping for kind of that feel from it. And this is my last birthday book. This is the one that my husband went and bought for me and gave to me as a present on my birthday. And that is Dragonfall by L.R. Lamb. I... I'm so impressed that he picked a book that I don't own, one, but also this looks so good. I feel like it just is giving the very high fantasy dragon vibes, which I absolutely love. I feel like if a book has dragons, it already goes up a notch in my book. Uh, you can be worse than other books, but if you have dragons, you're probably better. Like, I just, I love it. It's it's one of my favorite things in books. And I also feel like the premise of this book sounds really good. So humans pretty much tried to exterminate dragons, banished them to this not so great land that's like, they're essentially gonna die. And now this is like hundreds of years later, people worship dragons as if they were gods. But the dragons are not gone, and I think they're coming back for some revenge. I am so excited for this. I think this sounds so good. I actually, as soon as he gave it to me, I wanted to start reading it. So I read the first chapter, and I was like, no, you have you have way too much to read, because this was last month in my, like, TBR of 15 books, so I had to stop. But honestly, it's been a long time since I got a book and just immediately wanted to start it. So I'm really looking forward to this. And now let's just jump into special editions, because there are a lot of them. So this first one is, I believe, the first ever adult owl crate book, and that is <gasps> Masters of Death by Olive Blake. And this is why I'm a little irked that I bought Masters of Death uh, already from Barnes & Noble. But I did not know that this was waiting for me. I had a lot of boxes when I got back home to open up and I just like have not caught up on them with all the stuff I've had going on with living in Montana and then living down like six hours away in the state that I live in. And so yeah, I now have two copies of this. Yeah, here is Masters of Death by Olive Blake. This is the Owl Crate uh, Special Edition. It has wraparound. Sprayed edges are just black, which honestly, I'm not a huge fan of just like a single color sprayed edge, unless it's like gold, silver, metallic, something like that, then I can get with it. Um, under the dust jacket, we have that. We also have some art under the dust jacket as well, which is very pretty 
And let me see, I think it's signed by the author. Oh, we also have end papers, which are really pretty as well. And it is also signed by the author, Olive Blake. Um, I don't know if it's like a signed or a stamped one. Honestly, I don't really care that much either way as long as they're like open about it, whether it's signed or stamped or like print, printed on. Um, the printed on ones I feel like aren't actually signed, but signed or stamped, I, I really have no issue either way. I just like them to like, just let me know. It's not, I like this edition of it. I think it's cool, but I don't know. I haven't read the book yet, so I guess I don't really know how well it fits. The next Owl Crate one that I have is After the Forest by Kel Woods. I actually have seen this one showing up in the bookstore. It seems to be maybe a little bit popular. I absolutely love magical or sentient forest vibes in books. So this one I could see myself definitely reading. I love like The Wolf and the Woodsman and Uprooted. I just like that is a vibe that I'm always going. It's again, it's like dragons, right? It's automatically going to move the book up in my opinion. Again, I don't really know how well this change to the cover fits it. It is a pretty significant change. I'll put the original cover up here so you can see it. And I do like it. I just, I don't know if I love it. Again, we just have plain sprayed edges, just a solid color. And like I said before, that's not my favorite thing. This is underneath the dust jacket. I do like the green. I think it's cool. Um, the special end paper art we have on there. And then we also have under the dust jacket art, which I think is quite cool. It's a very unique art style and it's not something I've really seen very much. And so I could see myself maybe flipping the cover around and having this on the outside because I, I do think it's just really, really cool. And this one is also signed by the author and it has an author letter in there. I have noticed, I think Alcrate is doing the author letters, which I do quite enjoy. I think it's some like personalized stuff to it, which I think is nice. And the last of the Alcrate books that I have, so they must have only started in August maybe, is Starling House by Alexi Harrow. This is a book I actually am very excited to read. I think it sounds really intriguing, really good. I do like this change to the cover. I think it is actually absolutely beautiful. I love the color choices, stunning. Again, it's just like a solid sprayed color, which like I said, if it's like metallic, if it's gold, silver, I'm good with that. Just the plain, it doesn't work for me. This is underneath the dust jacket, which it's fine, it's okay. Uh, we have end paper art, which I do really like having pretty end paper art. I think it's, I, I like that better than reverse dust jacket actually. It does have reverse dust jacket art as well on there and signed by the author and author letter, so yeah. Now I think this one is about a girl who like dreams of this dark mansion called Starling House and then there might be a romance between her and the like master of the house. I don't really know what he'd be called. I really don't care. I just am feeling the vibes of this book and I think it's one I'm really gonna love. I'm excited to get to it. We're now going to jump into fairy loot books and we're gonna start off with a set that I purchased and that is the Raven Boys series. The Raven Cycle, I think is what it's called. I read these a few years ago and absolutely loved the series. The first and the third books were my favorite, but I really liked the vibes of it. Again, this is a, like a magical sentient forest vibe, which I really like. Uh, the covers are pretty similar to like the original ones. We have the second book here, The Dream Thieves. We have Blue Lily, Lily Blue. And then The Raven King. I think they might have just made them a little more vibrant, honestly. They feel like that. Uh, the edges are this like sprayed metallic silver, which again, it's solid, but I do like it better when it has this. I think it's just like a little something extra. Now let's jump into end paper art for them. Here's for The Raven King. And here is underneath the dust jacket for it, which it's very shiny. And then we have art on the reverse side, which you can flip these around, right? So this art, you could flip it around and have this be the artwork you want on the outside if you want your covers to be a lot different. Um, but I don't think I will. It also kind of has this cool, uh, 
Ah, you cannot really see it, but it's on the edge and they like line up. So I'll show you that at the end. So blue lily, lily blue. Here is the art on the reverse. The under the dust jacket. Oh, you can see that. And the uh, end paper art. The under the dust jacket art for the dream thieves under the dust jacket art and the end paper art. Why is that word just struggling so much? And then for the Raven Boys, here is the first one. Under the dust jacket art there, end paper art. And here is how the edges go together. I don't know if you can really see that, but it says like the Raven cycle on the bottom and you can see the trees like intertwining. I really like it. I think it's super cool. I would, de I think I would probably display it this way when I do display it, but whew, as of right now, I just need to get around to reorganizing my bookshelves because yeah, it's a little bit of a mess. And these fairy loot books are not in the order that I got them. I really don't know which ones are which month, honestly, but here we go into some more of the monthly subscription ones. So I have The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas, and this one I actually really like. This is a completely redesigned cover. I like the the design of it. I think it's very pretty. I don't particularly like ombre sprayed edges, honestly. Like, they just don't really do anything for me, but it's not terrible. Uh, it does have end paper art, and it has under the dust jacket as well, which I do like, and it is signed by the author as well. I don't really know anything about this one. It's given, giving kind of Persian vibes, potentially, because of the artwork, but I'm just not positive on it. I think it's an adult fantasy and that's about where my knowledge ends. Another one from the Fairy Loot is Shanghai Immortals by A.Y. Chow. And this one I really like the cover. I don't know how different it is than the original one, honestly. I think it's very pretty. I really like the sprayed edges. I think they're gorgeous. Oh, and they do have like little clouds on the top and bottom, which is kind of cool. Uh, it has, oh, it has a letter, which I kept in there <laughs> with it, but it also has under the dust jacket and, or it has naked hardback art and it also has and paper art as well, signed by the author. And overall, I like this one. I don't know anything about this, honestly. And I think it might be more of like a contemporary fantasy, which I'm not a huge fan of. I like high fantasy better. So I don't know, I, I, might, I may or may not get to this one. This next one I think is really beautiful. It is the next book by TJ Klune, who's the author of The House in the Cerulean Sea. And that is In the Lives of Puppets. I just really like this color choice. I think it's so pretty. It just gives very like either sunrise or sunset vibes. And both of them are like working for me. I like the sprayed edges a lot. I think they match really well. It has naked hardback art. That's fine, but I really like this um, end paper art. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So overall, I really like this edition. I like the house in the Cerulean Sea. I did not like, oh, what was the other one that he put out? I can't even think of it right now. But the, the next one that he put out about the tea shop, I did not like that one at all. I actually DNF'd that one. So this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to like or not. I feel like I'll read it if I'm ever in the mood for it, but it's not high priority. This one I feel like is probably had for a while. That's Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. This is the author of the like Romeo and Juliet retelling book that people were enjoying for a while. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this cover. I know a lot of people really like it, but I, I just, I, I don't. Um, I like how the sprayed edges are matching it and I think they're really well done. It's just not my favorite cover, honestly. It, oops, it does have some naked hardback as well as end paper art. And then it also has art on the reverse of the dust jacket as well. And really, I think this one is like a magical competition that takes place in maybe like a Hong Kong inspired location. But again, it feels a little bit more like contemporary fantasy to me. And that's just not something I love. So this one I may or may not read leaning more tarts, maybe not because I've heard people don't really love it that much. This next one, I actually really, really love the sprayed edges. That is Son of Blood and Ruin by Marily Lar Lares, Laris. Gosh, I'm so bad at names, but I 
like the cover. I don't actually know if this is redesigned or not, so I'll put the other one up so you can see see it over here uh, but I love these sprayed edges I do not know why but it just like it strikes me as beautiful I just really really love it this one also comes with a letter from the author and it has some naked hardback foiling it has end paper art and it has art on the reverse of the dust jacket. So they kind of went all out on this one. And overall, I really like it. I've heard absolutely nothing about this book. I've heard no one talking about it. All I know is this is an adult fantasy because it came in the adult fantasy box and really that's the extent of my knowledge. And this next one is probably my favorite special edition I've gotten from Fairy Loot in a while. I think it's absolutely stunning. And that is The Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzan. And Oh my goodness, just look at this cover. It's absolutely beautiful. Look at these sprayed edges. Like that is absolutely stunning. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. Uh, this one too came with an author letter. And we have some artwork on the naked hardback. And this isn't like a, one of those like smooth ones, you know, that you get sometimes. This is like a proper naked hardback. I don't know if it goes, oh, it does go around to the other side as well. And it also has artwork on the end papers. I think this is stunning. But one cool thing that I found on it, and I'm sure other people have found it as well, like it's, it's really fun. But um, where is it? it? Has this little ship. And as you like go through the book, I don't know if you can see this, but like the ship moves. <laughs> I just think that is so cool. So yeah, I love this edition. I have heard this is like Raylo fanfic and kind of like enemies to lovers and very like opposing like light versus dark. So I am intrigued by it. I think it's one that I would try to read, but I'm absolutely never going to read this edition because it is too pretty. We are now going to move on to some Illumicrate editions. And again, I do not know what order these go in, but we have Witch King by Martha Wells. This one I've actually not heard that good of things about. I was really excited about it because I know Martha Wells wrote the, oh gosh, Murderbot series. Couldn't think of the word there. But this is her first like outside of the Murderbot universe that I'm aware of. I think it might be YA and I've just not really heard that great of stuff about it so I probably am just not going to read it but I don't think there's any change to the cover. I really think this is like the original cover. I don't know if they made any changes to it. I don't believe so. It does have sprayed edges. They're, they're fine. Nothing too crazy. It has some nice foiling on the naked hardback and it's purple which is really cool and then it has um, artwork under the dust jacket. So yeah, I feel like this one's just like an okay one. This is not their best work. This next one I am actually so excited for. This is probably one of my most anticipated releases of the fall. And that is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I read The Wolf and the Woodsman and Juniper and Thorn and Thorn and absolutely loved both of them. So really looking forward to this. I've heard this is YA, but People are still loving it as much as her adult ones, so I don't think that's necessarily going to be something that I don't enjoy. I think this is a completely redesigned cover and I actually really like it. I could be wrong. This could be the UK cover and I just don't know because, you know, I, I, don't, I don't look at those, but it has really pretty sprayed edges as well. I do like the under the dust jacket or like not under the dust jacket, the naked hardback art. I think it's very cool, very pretty. And I, I like this artwork on the end pages as well. Again, it's also signed by the author, which we love to see. And I just can't wait to get to this book. I do think though that I probably am gonna buy a reading copy of this because I love Ava Reed's books and I like to have books that I'm able to like actually physically read. And I just don't think I'm gonna read this one because it's pretty. And here I think is the first double up of the subscription boxes and that is After the Forest by Kel Woods. This is the same as was in the Owl Crate, I believe. And I like this. I do, th again, it's hard for me to know whether this is just UK or complete redesign because I'm like so not as active on the book stuff as I used to be. But I really like the foiling of it. I bet that at least is a redesign. And I like the sprayed edges. I think they're pretty, but they're not like anything 
crazy spectacular for me. It does have naked hardback art that I do quite enjoy. And it has end paper art as well. And is of course signed. And I really like this one. I think that I probably, I think I might like the other one better, but I like this one's sprayed edges better. I don't know. It's hard for me to choose. This next one, I really love the, just the look of it. Again, I have heard nothing about it. I've been so out of the loop on book stuff lately, but that is The Sun in the Void by Gabriela Romero Lucruz. And I just think this is beautiful. It's got a stunning cover, wraps all the way around like that. I just, it's so beautiful. These sprayed edges, I like, I don't know. It's very like abrupt across, which I don't know how I feel about that. I do like it, but it doesn't line up with the cover. You can see it's like not at the same level. So that actually really bugs me. And it is lined up at the bottom. So that, like I, I get what they were doing, but it doesn't line up right. So I don't, it really bugs me. Uh, it does have a naked hardback art. It doesn't go all the way around. And it has end paper art as well and is signed. So overall, I think this is a beautiful book, but I do have my complaints about it. This is a really long, thick book, which I do kind of like when they do these, but they started this adult fantasy box. And I just feel like a lot of the picks that they're choosing are so like borderline YA or just like not really the strongest of like adult fantasy. And I don't know if this is just them wanting to stick to maybe their brand, or whether this is like things with the publishers, being able to make deals with them. I don't really know, but I just feel like I've been disappointed in their choices because going into it, I really did think that I, we'd be getting more like of the adult fantasy, like, I don't know what kind of releases, like stuff from James Eilington or from like Brandon Sanderson. And I get these are like bigger names, so you might not be able to get them, but that type of thing, right? Just a little bit more on the adult side uh and i think this one might be i could be mistaken but it's just like it feels like it's heftier it's thicker it just like has look and vibes of maybe like an older audience so i'm really looking forward to this one i actually think i could read this one even though i don't know what it's about it just gives the vibes i want and the last fairy loot that i have is the jasad air by sarah hashem and this one again i don't know anything about it i don't know anything about any of these books I apologize, but I can show you how pretty it is. It has some foiling on it. I think this is the original cover. I don't think they really changed too much. The end papers are not that interesting, honestly. The sprayed edges are okay, but not that great. Um, and it does have some naked hardback look to it. So you could just like display it as just this, which I do think that probably would be the coolest of all like the stuff that they have. Overall, this is kind of a, like a disappointment of the special edition. It's not really that cool, but like, it's okay. It's fine. And I did say, um, I did say fairy loot, but this is a Luma crate. It's, it's been a Luma crate since the Witch King. So whew, it's okay. I've got this. <laughs> We are now going to be jumping into the broken binding section of this book haul. And surprisingly, the broken binding has the majority. It has more than any of the other ones, which I did not expect to see. But we're gonna start off with some books that I purchased separately of my subscription with them. And the first one is Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mahanti. I am so, so bad at names. I really apologize, like I'm, I'm really bad at it. But here's the cover. I didn't actually notice this person in here ever. So uh, that's interesting. And we have these sprayed edges. Again, they're pretty simple, nothing too crazy nothing there and it does have the signed and the end papers which i do like again though this one wasn't that much more expensive than the regular version which is why i ended up going with this one plus i could not find this book in hardcover oh, sorry i have the hiccups anywhere and this is the only hardcover edition that i could find so i did purchase it directly from the broken binding not resale and 
I really like this cover. I think it looks really intriguing. This is just a book that I have been interested in reading and so I like hardcovers better than paperbacks so I went with this. It says the sun will set, the world will kneel, the stars will bleed as the shadows dance to a prophecy long foretold, a tale of war and ruin, a ballad inked in blood. So I'm just kind of anticipating kind of a brutal political adult high fantasy and I want some interesting magic, maybe like some gods thrown in there. It, like there's a prophecy for sure so yeah. Overall, I'm very excited for this book. I just don't know where I'm gonna get to it because my life is crazy. And this one, honestly, I kind of picked up because I was already getting other special editions from The Broken Binding at this time, and I wanted this book anyways, and that is The First Bright Things by J.R. Dawson. This one just has these sprayed edges. I think, I don't know if the regular one has the foiling on it, but it has some naked hardback and then just really basic end paper art. So overall it's not too crazy but again I was already getting some on some so they could all ship together and I was interested in this one anyways. And this one has to do with like these magical people that are in a circus. They're traveling across the United States and I am really not positive what's gonna happen there but I really enjoy magical circus vibes especially like dark magical circus vibes so I'm really hoping that this one will kind of give me similar to night circus vibes but obviously doing its own thing. This next one was also bought in that same batch and that is Gods of the Weird Wood by RJ Barker. This one again is another one that I could only find in paperback and I wanted a hardback of it. So I purchased this special edition from The Broken Binding. They didn't really change anything. They did give it sprayed edges and a little bit of under the dust jacket. Ugh. Naked hardback, wow, I am struggling today. And then very basic end papers as well. But again, I really got it mainly because I wanted this book in hardback. And this is one that has like the magical sentient forest vibes and that's literally all I needed to know about it. I'm really excited for this one. This one I think I do want to try to get to in this winter season. It just gives me those vibes and I'm just I'm really excited for this one. Sorry, battery died, so I had to change that. So if the angle changed, that is why. But the final book that I purchased that was separate from the regular subscription from The Broken Binding was this version of A Blood and Fire by Ryan Cahill. This one gives gives me adult Aragon vibes, and that's honestly literally the only thing that I needed to know about this book going into it. You can't see it too well because it has the like covering on it, but there's the artwork, the and, and it's honestly not super like crazy changes made to it. It does have this on it so you could display it like just this way which I think is appealing um, in a lot of ways and then it has this beautiful like colored map as its end pages which again I love maps and I actually really love when they do specialized maps on the inside of them instead of like the art. I'm, I'm totally open to that. <laughs> this is signed and numbered and I got number 132, which I think is actually a pretty small number, all things considered. And it does have the sprayed edges. They are these foiled gilded edges. And I love that. Like I said, if you're going to do just a single color, that would be the way to go. I really, really want to get to the series. I've heard people absolutely loving it. And I just think this is one that I will really love as well because I adored Aragon growing up. I still love it. I just reread the series again. And I just would like an adult Aragon. It sounds good. So yes, I definitely want to read this series. I think there's maybe three books out right now and a couple novellas. Now we're going to jump into the regular subscription books from The Broken Binding. These first two were supposed to come back in I think March or something. They're very delayed. I'll say that. I think they're maybe February and March of this year and I'm really not sure what happened but they got delayed uh, but they are here now. I already hauled the first one so I probably have done a, a book haul at the beginning of the year but we have Red Country and The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. These are oh gosh I actually don't know the name of this series. It's got to be in here somewhere right? It's somewhere in the world of the first law and I think it's the second series. Yeah, I think this is like his second series within the first law, or maybe it's like the um, standalone novels within the first law, something like that. But overall, they're pretty similar. The covers are the same as the original ones. I just don't think you can get them in hardback anymore. I really like the sprayed edges and they do go together very well when you put them all together. And they have 
foiling under the dust jacket as well as some like basic end paper art and signed by the author so overall I like these editions one thing that I really like about the Broken Binding though is they do these special editions of books that you really can't find in hardback so that's one thing that I I like a lot is a lot of the times they'll pick series that you only can get in paperback so I appreciate that this next series I've actually read the first book of and that is the Bone Ship series by R.J. Barker. Uh, he, these are adults. It's the, oh, I think it's actually called the Tide Child trilogy, not the Bone Ships one. The Bone Ships is the first book in the series. And again, these covers are pretty much the same as the paperbacks. Uh, they really didn't make changes to that, but they did, ooh, did I put these in the wrong order? Because they are not going together well. There we go. Okay, so. I like how the spine or the sprayed edges come together and form a picture. That's something I really do like that the Broken Binding does. It makes them really cohesive. And honestly, I like displaying them this way. I think it's so pretty. And this is an adult fantasy series that is set in a very nautical world. And they have these ships that are made out of the bones of these giant sea dragons. But these sea dragons are so rare now, you never see them. And in the first one, they are out for a hunt for one of the final ones that has been spotted and there's magic in it there's like these different beings creatures I'm not 100% sure what they are who are able to like use magic to help the ship and all of them kind of have this so I guess I don't really need to show you um they're all very very similar in how they look underneath but I quite enjoyed it. I know it's very hit or miss with people, but I quite enjoyed it. I would like to continue on with the series. I'm not going to reread the first one. So if I get to a point where I can't remember the first one well enough, I, I would have to reread it. I probably wouldn't, but I would like to finish this series. I feel like this is one that I'm intrigued by. I'm just not like obsessed with it. The next series that The Broken Binding chose was The Chronicles of the Wolf Queen. This is not what they were called before. I actually went and grabbed my copy of it because I bought it at like a used bookstore and it used to have a different name. I have it right here but I don't know why they chose to make that change. Maybe they thought it was like I don't know more accessible to more people. I really have no idea but we have these. This is what the cover looks like. It like you can see it's the same as like the original paperbacks but again this is the series you couldn't get in hardback so I do love that the Broken Binding does that. It has some foiling underneath which I think they do a great do job with their underneath foiling and their sprayed edges like that is their strong suit and just like some basic end paper art and once again it's signed by the author so overall I like what they did with this series I just don't think it's anything too crazy different um they don't tend to do like they don't tend to do unique covers or changes to the covers at all. They really tend to keep the same ones. But like I said, I do like their under the dust jacket stuff. They really do a good job with that and their sprayed edges. So that's really my favorite thing about Broken Binding is getting them in hardback, sprayed edges, under dust jacket. In case you were considering, these are what the sprayed edges look like. I think they go beautifully together. So overall, I like this series. I am intrigued to read it. I really am. I just, I haven't heard people love the entire series. I've heard people really like the first one, but I've honestly never heard anyone talk about the whole series. So okay, I'd want to like look into whether people like the ending or not, because it bugs me when I don't like the ending and I put so much time into a series. And the final book from The Broken Binding from the subscription is Promise of Blood by Brian McClellan. This one is his Powder Mage trilogy. It has the same cover as the paperbacks, but again, this is a series that you cannot get in hardback. At least I could not find it in hardback. I like the edges. I think they're going to form a beautiful picture, so I am really looking forward to that. It has some really pretty art on the naked hardback. I like it's it's a stunning artwork honestly and then it does have some art on the end papers as well and once again it is signed and numbered. This series I have read. I did not love it. It was overall okay. I feel like I loved how this first one started. Like it started off so strong. I was thinking I was going to absolutely adore it and by the end I was convincing myself I was like well yeah I did like it but 
the more we went on with the story, I kind of liked it less. I liked some characters quite a bit, but there was one that I absolutely hated. So anytime we were in his perspective, I was annoyed. I just wanted to get out of it. It was so frustrating. This is an adult high fantasy series that's set in a world where like powder for guns is used as magic. There's gods that are interfering in here. There's a lot of political unrest. And we really start out with them overthrowing the monarchy and killing the monarch to establish an elected government. So that's really kind of how it starts and it's pretty brutal. And I really like the premise. I just did not feel like the execution was that well, especially the characters. I like, I don't know of anyone who likes Taniel. Just throwing that out there. Now onto some special editions that aren't necessarily from book boxes. I got the special edition of Fourth Wing, like the holiday edition, and I got Iron Flame. I guess this isn't necessarily a special edition. It's just a first printing with sprayed edges. Mine came okay. Like the sprayed edges don't look great. I don't know if you can really see it in here, but they're just, they're not super well done. Um, it was at least like bound correctly, which I've heard some people are having issues with that. And overall, I liked, oh, it's like has stickiness on the cover, which is kind of weird. Uh, but overall, I liked Fourth Wing okay. I didn't love it. But like I said, I absolutely love books with dragons. I like books with magical schools. So this really has a lot in it that I love in books. So I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to keep going. I am kind of intrigued to see where we go with it. I just didn't love the writing style. And I had some issues with Fourth Wing. I feel like I don't necessarily need to go into fourth, what Fourth Wing is because everyone and their dog is reading this book. Uh, but yeah, I decided to grab those just because I didn't want to regret not having them. This next special edition I'm actually really excited about, and that is The Sword of Kaigen by Emma Wong. This was a Kickstarter special edition that I got, and I love it. I've read this book. This is an adult high fantasy that's set in this world where the like people on the island of Kaigen are kind of the protection for their people against invading forces, and they've kind of just been trained to do this their whole life. And we kind of get some exposure to the outside world and start realizing that things may be up a little bit more going on in the politics than they are letting on to these people in Kaigen. So the special edition was limited to 4,000 copies and I have number 2221, which I think is kind of a cool number, but um, I don't really care about the number that much. I just am really excited about the book. I think it's beautiful. It's just so well made. It feels like such good quality. Yeah. So overall, I'm really excited that I was able to take part in this Kickstarter. I love it. I think it's a gorgeous book and I really, really loved the book as well. So yeah, I would highly recommend it. The next two are the last two in Brandon Sanderson's surprise secret novels. And that is the Sunlit Man and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. These are the Kickstarter versions and I love this one. I think it's so pretty. I still haven't pulled them out of the wrapping so I'm not going to necessarily do that right here. But yeah, I'm really excited about these. I've heard people liking Yumi a lot so I'm really looking forward to this one. Haven't heard as much about the Sunlit Man but yeah, I love Brandon Sanderson. Oh, has sprayed edges on that one. I feel like this is the only one that has sprayed edges and it's kind of weird to me. I'm kind of wishing it didn't. I like sprayed edges, but the rest don't, so it doesn't really match, and that's gonna bug me. These next special editions I actually have not taken out of the wrapping, uh, which I know makes it really hard to show them, and I might show them again in another video if I decide to keep them, and that is the Fairy Loot Crescent City editions. I really loved the editions that they came out with. I thought they were super pretty, but I haven't opened them because I haven't read them yet, and I just haven't decided if I want to keep them, and if I am going to sell them, I'd like them to maybe still be in their packaging so someone else can have like bread, brand new fresh ones. Oh no, the lighting is going away. But anyways, I, I do have these ones as well. I haven't opened them to look at them, but I know they're gorgeous because I remember the pictures. Now we're going to just jump into other books that I purchased. These next three books, once a year I'll go to the bookstore with my husband. We'll pick out books like purely based on how pretty their covers are. And the first one I got was Dance of Thieves by Mary Pearson. This one is the Barnes Noble Special Edition actually. It has gold sprayed edges and I really like it. I think it's very pretty. I don't know. No, it doesn't really have anything underneath. But I did read like the Kiss of Deception series earlier this year and I liked it okay. I didn't love it. So 
I'm considering continuing on with the series, but it's not a high priority. This is a YA fantasy series, and it's like very classic way where you have like the princess, prince, thief, um, enemies to lovers type thing. The first one was kind of intriguing in that it was written in a way where you didn't know who was the prince and who was the assassin. And we were following our princess main character in this one, not knowing who, which one was which, uh, which was kind of an interesting way to do it. So uh, that was intriguing. But overall, I thought that it was just an okay average series. This next one is Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. This was my husband's choice and I really like the color scheme of it. Uh, interestingly enough, it is signed by the author. It has like special end papers on it and it does have like a little embossing on there. I don't know if you can really see it. So it's some sort of Barnes and Noble exclusive, I think. Um, but it also was $3 off. So that's great. This is a YA fantasy series, Break the Curse Before It Breaks You. I'm guessing this is going to be a very classic YA fantasy, honestly. I, 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 I'm intrigued by it, but it's not high on my priority list. And again, I don't know much about this one either because it was exclusively a cover by and that was In an Orchard Grown from Ash by Rory Power. And I just, I don't know, something about this one, just like, I like it. It looks good. It looks intriguing. It says siblings torn apart by betrayal, grapple with their broken bonds and fight to regain their power in this stunning conclusion to a mystery epic fantasy duology. Oh no. Well, apparently this is the second book in a duology and I'm going to have to go find the first one. So yay for me. These next two books were gifts from some subscribers who took part in my 48 hour TBR mini star harp readathon. They were just kind of like thank yous for hosting the readathon. And I felt so like, touched to receive gifts from that. I don't expect anything. I'm just doing it uh, to hang out, to have fun, just really enjoy reading and the company of other people who love reading. So this was just such a like happy surprise and it meant a lot to me. I did already post about them on my Instagram when it did happen because I didn't, well, I, I knew it would be months before I filmed this and I was right. So the first one I have is The Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. And this says, thank you so much for hosting the readathon this past weekend. It was my first time participating and I had a blast from Virginia. So thank you so much, Virginia. This, I am so excited to get to this one. I read Kindred by Octavia Butler like in February, I think, and I really enjoyed her writing style. I think she does a really good job of getting very deep and emotional and getting you invested in these characters and their relationships and just feeling all the emotions and the trauma that these people are going through. And I love these covers of this series. I think this is her most well-known series, if I'm not mistaken, besides maybe Kindred. And so I really want to read it. Octavia Butler is an author I wanted to get into more, so I'm very excited about this. And another one that I've just had my eye on for a while, for some reason it just seems intriguing, is Empire of Sand by Tasha Sori. This is another one that was a gift. It says, thank you for the mini star hop round from Fire Whiskey Reader. So I appreciate it so much. I am so excited to read this one. So this one is blurbed by S.A. Chakraborty. It says, a stunning and enthralling debut, which in all reality, I'm kind of hoping that this one will give some City of Brass vibes. I love the like Persian atmosphere. I feel like it feels so magical and just beautiful. And I absolutely love that setting in books. So I'm really excited to jump into it. I heard this is an enemies to lovers, a nobleman's daughter with magic in her blood and empire built on the dreams of enslaved gods. And y'all know I love books about like wronged gods, enslaved gods, vengeful gods. I find it so fun in books. Like I think it's one of my favorite tropes to have. So I'm really excited to try this one out. Plus it's only a duology and it's kind it's not super long. How long is this? Like 430 pages ish. So it's very doable and only a duology. So I'm, I'm excited about this one. Okay. Trying to get through the last few stacks of books. We have Labyrinth's Heart by M.A. Carrick. This is the third and final book in the Rook and Rose trilogy. Uh, it starts with Mask of Mirrors. I haven't read the first one, but it is high up on my priority list. This is an adult fantasy series that is very focused on politics and just like political maneuvering. And there's a con artist who's trying to like lie her way into becoming part of this very well-off family. I have heard only good things about this series. I've had so many friends read it, love it, so I'm really excited to get into it. 
Next one I picked up at a used bookstore in Montana when I was up there, and that is The Invasion of the Tearling by Erica Johansson. This is like covered in protection. It's hardcover. I don't really love deckled edges, but I think that's just how like the series goes. And yeah, this is the second book in the Queen of the Tearling series. This is a series I've had on my radar for a while because it was on a list of like Emma Watson's favorite books. And so I was like, oh, I should look into it. And then I just never read it. I've heard really good things about the first book and the second book, but not necessarily the third one. So I'm hoping I enjoy it. I think this is an adult fantasy series and it's this queen trying to regain her power. These next three books were really bought because they were picked up by traditional publishing and I wanted the um, original self-published versions and those are The Serpent and the Wings of Night, Six Scorched Roses, and The Ashes and the Star Cursed King by Carissa Broadbent. I have seen these all over the book Dernet. People are absolutely loving them. It is a fantasy romance and I believe that there is a competition that like a magical competition that is happening in these books which I absolutely love. I've heard such good things about the series. People love it and I think they have stuff under the dust jacket. Yeah they have like art stuff underneath the dust jacket, which I don't know if the traditionally published ones are going to have that or not. I'm not sure, which is part of the reason why I want to get these before they were traditionally published. I don't think they changed the covers too much on them, but I uh, could be mistaken. And this one has like really pretty under as well. So yeah, I, I definitely wanted to get these in case they don't have anything on the naked hardback on the tra traditionally published ones. Another just random trip to the bookstore. I picked up The Warden by Daniel M. Ford. This one, again, is a magical forest. And I love it. I love that trope. I love that. And the forest calls them home. Oh, no, what does it say? It says, for fans who have always wanted their Twin Peaks to have some wizards, The Warden is a nonstop action adventure story. So I'm really excited about this. It's, it's like, old magic in the woods. It's restless. They have these wardens who are there to keep it at bay. And it's pretty short. And I think it is a standalone. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I honestly want to read it as soon as I bought it, but I just didn't have the time. And now it's kind of been kind of pushed to the back. But this is one I'm really interested in. I don't really remember where I got this one, honestly. Um, but I have The True Bastards. This is the second book in the Grey Bastard series. And this is a story about orcs that are patrolling and like protecting a land, I believe. And I think they're kind of outcasts and not really appreciated. I haven't really heard anyone talking about the series, but I've seen it and it just sounds different. It sounds like a unique take on it where you have these people who are traditionally like the bad guys in the books and making them the protagonists. So yeah, I'm intrigued by this one. I also on one of my bookshop walks stopped and picked up The Lonesome Crown, which is the third and final book in the Five Warrior Angels ser G series trilogy by Brian Lee Durfee. I like that it's so floppy. Like look at the flop of this paperback. It's it's amazing. It's it's so good. And fun story, while I was at the bookstore, I ran into Brian Lee Durfee. He was there. And so he signed my book for me. I'm really excited about it. I am a little bit bummed because I have the first two books in hardback and this one was never published in hardback. So I had to get it in paperback, which I am glad that it's a nice floppy one, but I do like my series to match. I'm excited to continue on with this series. I read the first one and I really enjoyed it. This is a adult grimdark series that is set in a world where you have this country led by what they believe is kind of the prophesied successor to their god and he is pretty much coming over and trying to take over the rest of the world and then you have these other people who are believed to be like the reincarnations of the five warrior angels they're trying to find these people find the weapons and everything in time to stop this kind of evil dictator guy from taking over the world. I find it very intriguing. It is very complex adult high fantasy and I really do enjoy it. I just am not in a space right now where I necessarily want too complex of adult high fantasy because my brain is like completely used up on school right now but I am going to be continuing this series and I'm buddy reading it with my friend Abby. I was in a used bookstore and I happened to find this edition of An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. This is an older version of it. This is completely out of print. They don't make it anymore. You can't find the rest of the series to match it either. But I like this cover so much better than the new updated one. So I went ahead and got it. 
we have this room like downstairs in our condo building and people will leave books sometimes and you can just grab them and take them if you want to and so i found the nightingale by Kristen hannah as far as i'm aware this is a world war ii historical fiction and people absolutely love it they say it's just so emotional heart-wrenching so well written and my mom read it and loved it and thinks i should read it so this one is on my list but i do feel like i need to be in the mood for it because i don't really read that much historical fiction i read much more fantasy clearly I also happened to find Saber by Garth Nix. This is a series that has been on my radar for quite a while. I think this is a YA fantasy series. It's much older. I don't really know anything about it, but it is such a like classic fantasy series. So I definitely want to get to it and read it. I loved Garth Nix growing up. I read like his Seventh Tower series and then his series about like the different days of the week people so I do really love him and I think it's kind of shocking that this his most popular series is the one I haven't read uh, but I do want to try it out and I thought it'd be nice to like have gotten it for free so I can try it before I decide to get there's a lot of special editions of it out there so it'd be kind of cool to get a special edition if I do end up loving it and the last one I found down there was Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. I liked Neil Gaiman when I read a ton of Neil Gaiman books like a few years ago. Really enjoyed his writing, the style of it. I just haven't gotten back into him. He writes more like contemporary fantasies and I've moved away from those a little bit in general unless they like have the vibes that I like. I feel like contemporary fantasy is all vibes for me now. But I did really enjoy his writing so I'd like to continue on with his works at some point. Another Olive e. Blake book that I picked up on one of my walks was One for My Enemy and this is like a signed edition. I don't know if it was just somehow happened to be at my bookstore signed. I don't really know where it came from but there you go. This one is about a rival witch clans and there's some sort of like rivalry going on between them and I believe there might be like Romeo and Juliet retellings of it. it has a really pretty end paper so yeah I'm really looking forward to this I like Olive Blake's writing so much and I'm really excited to like continue more of her work and finally we are at the end of this book haul I know it's been so long I, I recognize it I feel it too uh, this one I don't have to talk about too much because I just purchased like this new editions of the Mistborn series. So I have the original Mistborn trilogy and then the Wax and Wayne book of four, whatever, quartet. <laughs> I don't have the first one because I did lend it out. And so I don't have the Final Empire, but I have all the other ones here. I really like these new covers. I'll show you, I don't really need to show you all of them. They're pretty similar, but Cures Well of Ascension, the second book in The Mistborn. It has this type of look to it. It has whatever our main character is like flying up there and they are amazing floppy. Like they just feel so good in your hands. They're a bigger paperback. So I don't know. I just feel like this is the perfect paperback book and these are going to now be my reading copies of the Mistborn series because I know I'm going to go back and read them again. I love this especially the first Mistborn trilogy is one of my absolute favorite series and I know I'm going to reread it over and over again. So these are my reading copies and my like lending out to friends copies. So those are the books in this book haul. This was insanely long. This took way longer than I was expecting. I mean, the sun has literally changed position while I've been doing this. And uh, we now have much worse lighting than we had at the beginning. So apologies for that. But I, whew, I'm kind of surprised I got through it. I'm kind of proud of myself, honestly. And I'm so excited about so many of these books. A lot of them are just like special editions to have of books that I already enjoy or books that I couldn't find in hardback. So I like that. But there are a lot in here that I just cannot wait to get to. I mean, I'm looking over here and my TBR is ridiculous. Like they're... <sighs> I don't know if I could even get through the books in this haul that I want to read within the next year. There are so many books. I need to count them and let you know how many are in here. I'll be right back. 70. 70 books in this book haul. That's insane. I let it go too long. I will not be doing that again. I say that every time. I'm lying. I probably will do that again. But I will try not to do that again because by the time I do my next book haul, I will no longer be in school. And that feels so good to say. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you are still here at the end, leave me a book emoji. No, leave me a blue heart emoji down in the comments to show you have made it this heart far because I have a feeling this is going to be like almost an hour long video. Whew. Okay, 
I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if you have a suggestion of one that I was kind of leaning towards that you're like, yes, this one is for you or one that I was less interested in that you really feel like I would enjoy, let me know and I will move it up on my list. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.